Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Pop Cult X. This is our season three, kind of like a, a teaser trailer for you guys. My name is Danny. I'm one of your co-hosts here on Pop Cult X, which, as you know, or maybe you're not aware of yet, is a pop culture YouTube show slash podcast where we talk about all things pop culture from my and Gabe's Gen X point of view or sensibilities. Um, so this season we have a lot of fun, exciting things downloaded in the pipe, not downloaded, but you know, ready to go for y'all. Um, we got interviews with creative people, from film directors, film composers, actors, writers, comic book artists, you know, the usual who we like to develop in our little talks, which is our, our creative conversation series. And, you know, to get a different viewpoint and the whole world of pop culture from, from other people's perspectives and through their eyes and learn a little bit about them and what inspires them, what moves them. And so that's what we have loaded for season three. We have a few other little tricks up our proverbial sleeves that we'll be bringing to you, some new stuff, some new items. You'll get more of the, of the same from us where we will be talking about, you know, trending topics. And I am thrilled to be chatting with our first guest interview of season three. And that is Fred Greenhouse. Hal, Hal, Greenhouse. And he is the head of audio with Realm Media. And it's it's just a, a great immersive storytelling that's new because it is a, I think it builds upon the old time radio type shows. So let's go ahead and hear that interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Pop Cult X Little Talks. It's our conversation series where we speak with a wide variety of creative people. And today we are fortunate to be joined by Fred Greenhouse. Did I say that I right? Got yes. I got it. Yes, I nailed it. <laughs> I practiced it for like 30 seconds beforehand. No. <laughs> Fred is the audio head audio engineer. Is that correct? Uh, At, just the head of the audio department overall. Yeah. Head of the audio. Like, that's even higher up than I thought so, uh, we're at Realm Media. And um, I'm not sure if anyone, well, not anyone, I'm not sure how well known Realm Media is yet, but to me, it is fascinating. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. But before we get into that, Fred, how was your New Year celebration? How are you doing? How's Maine treating you? Uh, well, thanks for all the things. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, this is really a fun way to kick off 2023. Uh, yeah, I'm here in Maine, uh, which maybe we'll have a chance to touch on. You know, kind of working in, in entertainment <laughs> and like a rural part of the country, which is a whole journey right there. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, New Year's Eve, New Year's celebrations. Like I don't know, I'm kind of got this pagan vibe going on. We have a big bonfire. Oh, fun. Uh, look at the sky, enjoy the stars, <laughs> kind of think about uh, times gone by and times to come. Um, yeah. And now the year has kicked off again. And uh, yeah, we had a pretty big storm. So just as an example of like a day in the life of Fred, um, like part of why clearly I do what I do is an obsession with sounds that mm -hmm. I find interesting. Uh, we had a, yep. Yeah, I was not quite gutsy enough to go down to the ocean during this period of time, but we had a, a you know, like hurricane force winds and all this storm oh, wow. surge, this big storm right before it was like the two days before Christmas. Um, and I, you know, I didn't like, Oh, everyone else like <laughs> go inside, get warm. I'm like, <laughs> gotta get my gear, you know, rain jacket. Uh -huh. uh, we were going out and they collect some like really wet <laughs> sounds for my next project. So, there you go. Um, that's, that's part of, yeah, I both live it and collect, collect it for art. All at the same time. Nature provides, I guess, right? So totally. <laughs> well, you said um audio, and that's like your big your big thing. What really drew you into that field? I mean, is it something you growing up be like just intrigued by sounds, or what really drew you to being the audio engineer, head of audio? How shape tell us a story, shape of that path for us. Yeah, well, I mean, since I was a kid kid uh i was born in the 80s like just i don't know like i was doing like what you'd call fan fiction from an early age of the, the okay. like, dragon warrior made my own like characters and wrote about their stories i made up my nice. own ninja turtle uh at one point in time <laughs> awesome. and just like always um always was interested in storytelling and 
uh yeah and if you know kind of grow, growing up in maine like stephen king is kind of like our patron saint mm-hmm. like uh, the library <laughs> where i went to school like he him and his wife tabitha built that wing of the library and then there's in one of my shows the dark tome there's this uh, character Mr. Gussie, who is this bookkeeper who gets the protagonist of the story into this magical occult book that takes her to other worlds. Well, Thanks. there was a time when I was in the third grade where there really was a bookkeeper who was sort of like that in my life. Who, <laughs> uh, was like, oh, hey, kid, you look all a 12. You should probably start reading Stephen King. Um, so that's all to say that story was sort of very deep in me, but I didn't really know that audio existed as a thing you could do. Um, and yeah, my origin story there is a lot like you still kind of find people now, whether you're calling it like radio drama or like scripted fiction is kind of the term that people are using now or or whatever. We're talking about, you know, in the greater world of podcasting, we're talking about a show where you are hearing actors, sound effects, and music, and it feels like a TV or film experience, except mm-hmm. it's designed to work in audio. And I had no idea that any of that existed. And, and it's, it's hilarious because there's almost a joke within the community, like every time like some new production company has found it, it's like, we've discovered... <laughs> you know, fiction podcast. But for me, that moment was like, yeah, I was a senior in college and I had I had been I'd done a year of film school in New Orleans and was like had had fallen in love with being like the boom guy on set. Um, the the program oh, nice. down there uh, mm-hmm. had a had a thing where like undergrads could work with grad students and could also go out uh, on location with some of the Hollywood movies that were shooting in oh, Louisiana at the time. And so I somehow like ended up with the sound department and it was like just like there were a couple of days where I was like wandering around with all these, you know, audio nerds with microphones in the French <laughs> quarter. And I'm like, this is cool. I like this. Um, but I didn't quite grasp how you'd do it for storytelling until uh, I got back to Maine and someone is like, have you ever heard of old time radio dramas? And he gave me there you uh, are. Yes. cassette tapes, which even at that point were a little <laughs> antiquated, but I managed to dig up a cassette player and like start listening to this stuff. And I'm like, this is really cool. Why aren't more people doing it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and now it's like almost 20 years later and more people are doing it. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's like full circle. I mean, that's how I just, I don't want to say discovered you, but, um, knew, found out about your existence. So in a way I did discover you if, yeah. for my own personal interest. Sure. So, um, on pop cult X, we interviewed, um, Jeffrey Marietta, Marietta, oh, Marriott okay. and Peter Marietta. So we had them on separate interviews and I, cause I really enjoyed blood and gold, the Joaquin Marietta story. Mm. So then they, we talked about, you know, maybe making it to a TV show. What, what, what's going on with that? They said, well, we do have an audio book like story coming out. So I was like intrigued by that. And then finally I saw um, announcements for it and listened to the first five episodes, I think so far that I've heard. And it's just fascinating. Mm. It's just really immersive it engrosses you into the story even more if that's possible and so i tweeted about it and i think uh, i saw a reply from you or somewhere along the line i got connected to you and it was just great and i wanted to know more about this medium because i've always been a fan of like you said the old time radio stories and why aren't we doing those more especially with podcasts so when i discovered that and found out what you're doing i was like i gotta get right on the show Awesome. Well, uh, that's so cool. There's so many layers there. Uh, first off, thank you for the shout out for Blood and Gold. That uh, you know, I mean, I'm very, very lucky and blessed now to work on a bunch of different projects. Uh, any number of them, I could be super, incredibly proud of as my highlight of the year. Uh, Blood and Gold is really special because it's a story that really uh, you know needs to be told, and and mm-hmm. there's so much realness to it um so i'm sure that you probably covered some of that um when you were talking with peter and company um and yeah and we had this amazing performance with richard cabral bringing you know walking to life Mm -hmm. so yeah just for listeners who haven't heard that piece i mean it's basically the story of or you know the man who the myth of zorro may have been based on yeah uh, yeah his Mm -hmm. life story which is you like hear it and you're like, and this is all real. You're like, this is like, like of all the depictions of like Zorro on the screen, like we are missing out on like this part that's really remarkable. And exactly, so we knew we had a you know really important story to tell. Uh, and you know, Richard was just someone who kind of inhabited and sort of was the character. And so this sort of gets into like what makes this uh, you know medium unique is uh, it 
you know, Richard had done a uh, a one person play, and so it's sort of like you just got to do that for you know like, like twelve hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you sort of go into this is a very, even though podcasting is sort of new and, and it's technology driven, like this is like us around a campfire mm-hmm. going, you know, back mm-hmm. like 100,000 years of oral tradition here. And so you, your job here is not to quote, like make an audio book. You're here to just be there and feel and experience the story and help us, you know, also connect emotionally with the journey this person goes yeah. on because um like once you like the main character definitely commits acts that no one <laughs> would think are good things but like once you really understand what he went through and and the horrors that exactly you know, he experienced yes. like you, you mm-hmm. sort of you can build that empathy and so i think mm-hmm. it's both like on the surface like anything you could want from a, a western you know uh romance and guns and gold i mean it's right there in the title <laughs> gold. Um, but it also has all these other layers to it um in terms of like you know, who's telling the story and why uh and also uh, yeah. And, and, um, so on, on that project, I ended up directing, uh, more than half the show. We, oh, wow. All right. I was, I ended up, you know, kind of working with the post-production team. What the sound designer of the show, Eric Mooney is someone who I'd worked previously in my, in my own independent life and, and brought him on the project. And he was the kind of person who like, when we're talking about, like, there's all these like fight scenes, like, what mm-hmm. kind of revolver do you use? And he's like, well, Fred, it's like, this is like an 1847. I only have like an 1857, you know, Colt Dragoon. Is that going to work? Or like, I think, I don't think any listeners are going to know. Like, <laughs> like, wait um, a minute. <laughs> but there, there is that sense of immersion. And um, it was also, uh, I will say one of the, one of my sort of highlights having worked on it. So, uh, you know, it's mixed in Dolby Atmos, which even now with, with cool. all the podcasting mm-hmm. apps is not sort of fully rolled out, but mm-hmm. If you have, uh, it's called like a binaural mix. If you are listening on headphones, especially on like the spatial AirPods, yeah. it'll feel that sense of immersion is really there. Like the the sounds, the sort sort of story is always center focused, but then like things like the music and the sound effects are built all around you. Yes. Uh, so my wife told me, she's like, more than once in this show, Fred, I have like turned around thinking there was a horse snorting behind me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I did the same thing. It's true. Our goal here. (laughs) It's that's very true. Listening to it, I have the AirPods, so I heard it in the spatial audio because I I love the Dolby Atmos, and I was like, "Whoa, where's that?" You know, I thought there was a horse back over there. So yeah, you did succeed very much. So so that's that's what we're going for, and because you know, it's one of those things where like you you immersive has become like such a buzzword at this point that it's sort of like what does it even mean anymore? And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, for me and for realm, it's about like, I don't want you to notice good sound design. Like we want you to be experiencing the the story. And yes, this is all in there. And the countless hours of effort have gone into (laughs) building the texture and the thoughtfulness and, and saying like, I mean, to the point, because uh, my wife's also a uh, sort of a bird uh, birder enthusiast. And so like I've had shows where I've heard like a bird that's not in a native environment. I'm like, oh, my God, there's a hermit thrust. Well, this is taking place in Europe and they're not indigenous <laughs> to that area. Da, 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 da. So like all like stuff like that of like, you know, you, you you have to make some movie magic once in a while. But like you're trying to make sure there's a real sense of of this is an actual physical location that is real. Um so that you can just be enchanted by the story and whisked away. And even if you don't have sort of the techno babble language to appreciate what you liked about it, you you have this sense of having just gone through this experience. Like a lot of, you know, it's like just like good production design. The less you would notice the design, the better it is. So that's what we that's, that's what we're going for. That's very true. Very true. I think the like you said, immersion. I think when I read a book, I build up the whole scene in my head, mm-hmm. right? So what I'm hearing, and, and it's not an audio book. I don't want anyone to get that idea that it's just an audio book because it's so much more than that. But to be able to get the sound element mm-hmm. for what I'm picturing already in my head, and even as I'm hearing um, the actors act out the story because it's not he's not just reading it, um, it just really creates... I, it's just something inside of me. It just really moves me. Mm. And I appreciate that. I really do. So I appreciate all the hard work you and your team put into that to create that. 
Awesome. Well, thank when, you. And, and there's a, just a, a throw another little thing in there that people may not even realize. So uh, we also have like uh, uh, loop groups like you would for TV film. So this is like one of those cool things that people do that most people people who enjoy TV and film don't know about, but there's like, like when you hear crowd scenes on a, on a major film, like, yeah, you can go find some sound library where people are saying, you know, peas and carrots or whatever, mm -hmm. but the, actually the better film and TV, uh, they have people, actors that they hire who just specialize in improvised conversations, essentially. So we were able to do that uh, okay. and have people who are bilingual Spanish and English. And so uh, like, if you go to the village, there's like, oh, you know, there's a, right, right. something bad happened. And then and you hear people coming out of their houses to, to look at like what just went down in the street. And that was, that was something that those performers did. So it's just like that, little details awesome. like that, that just make it, make it more real. Cause we just are just taking that like level of uh, care and attention to detail. Right. And that care and detail. And I guess not to be in, that you weren't trusted with it, but to be entrusted with that story and to deliver on that. Um, I'm sure I don't know if you've had a chance to speak with Peter or Jeff afterwards after that came out to get their feedback on it or not. What yeah. did you make? I, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't spoken <laughs> to them directly myself. I should say, I should drop a line to say hi. Um, yeah. The, the, <laughs> Uh, the point of contact there was a sort of a advisor person at Realm who knew them, and also one of our editors um, on the Realm side, Marco, who okay. worked with them. So, um, yeah, I, I I'm sure they it. like it because I've seen their tweets and posts about it, and I know that nothing but glowing reviews from them. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, to anyways, what's fun about podcasting, sort of in general, as, as you know, quote Wild West as it is, <laughs> is like. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great TV film coming out. Don't get me wrong, but podcasting still is a space where you you can stay a little closer to artistic vision when so inclined. And so, just because it's like a it's a in the grand scheme of entertainment, a, a simpler project to make uh, over mm -hmm. a shorter period of time, and so mm -hmm. you can just sort of say, you know, yes, there's especially if you'd read the, the novel that like there are, are are cuts. Like that was one of the bigger things was figuring out how to like uh, condense a really huge novel into a, a, a different experience, but it, you know, really stayed true to the text in a way that is much harder to do when you're sort of bringing something to the stage and the rules are so much different. Yeah, that's so true. there's a, there's a certain like just ability uh, it, with podcasts as they are today to just kind of have fun and to have sort of fewer rule makers. So that you could just <laughs> go and make something that's a little bit bold and audacious because um, you know, we're, there's still a lot of room to play in this new art form. Right. Very true. And and speaking of this art form, so you have your own independent um, company. Would you call it a film company, audio company? What would no, you call it's it? an audio production company. Um, yeah. Dag Dagaz Media, which still exists. I'll say kind of Realm has <laughs> taken, <laughs> you know, I, I'm uh, fully, fully in it at Realm um, on a full time capacity. So Dagaz kind of exists to keep some of my previous projects Ah, uh, okay. Cooking, gotcha. So we have the dark okay. home and the cleanse, but it's it's the company that got got me all here because uh, it was through the work at Dagaz that I originally made the context at Rome. But oh, yeah, okay. uh, for almost close to fifteen years. Oh, wow. So from that origin story I said earlier of like when mm -hmm. I first uh, you know discovered audio dramas um, in in my college years, within about two years I was making them as regularly as I could at the moment. And probably a year after that started what was originally Final Room Productions, eventually became Degas Media. And yeah, and there was a huge adventure over all those years, making stuff independently, doing stuff like Lock and Key for Audible. And we did an X-Files wow, cool. based on the graphic novels project, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. Well, really cool. Well, let me ask you this, what kind of, what? What's in store? What can we expect coming up that you're maybe projects you're working on that you can divulge? Cool. Well, uh, so with me specifically, so I, I mentioned Stephen King earlier, I'm kind of best known in the horror space. And right on. What one of the things I now have is I actually host a podcast again, which is funny because I'd sort of oh, like cool. uh, uh, retired from podcast <laughs> hosting in like 2015 <laughs> and Rome got me back in it. So um, I have a show undertow which is an ongoing which, which is kind of a clever idea so i have a 
uh, at this point, sort of this the Fred Greenhalgh version of Spooky Maine. Uh, and mo- and I, I didn't really realize I was doing this until at some point in time, I just had a bunch of shows that all interconnected in this like sort of sideways Ooh. version of Maine, That's which, cool. uh, you know, could be cousins with sort of, you know, spooky Stephen King land, but it definitely has its own unique feel and, and weirdness. So, uh, how that works is instead of being like one gigantic storyline that goes on and on forever, mm-hmm. uh, each season is a standalone experience. So the, the first season of undertow is Simpson falls, uh, the second season, which I just wrapped, is uh, Blood Forest about werewolves in a small nice. town on the edge of the frontier where things are not going so great. And then werewolves appear, <laughs> 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 antics ensue. Uh, and then, the, and yeah, and then we're, we're going to be re releasing uh, my series, The Dark Tome, on the Undertow feed. And then there's going to be a uh, uh, something that involves being underwater and scary things <laughs> following that later this year. So yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Cause then, you know, back in the day it would be, you know, just trying to get a new project going was always such a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, now in my capacity at realm, I'm very blessed where we, we, we've, pro- we've, we've barely even wrapped the last thing and it's like, okay, we're going to another writer's summit that's and we're cool. going to like get another concept going. So that's that the cool. like, Fred specific things. Uh, Realm is also getting the business uh, of of making shows for other entities. So we have uh, this was announced in Variety. So I'm not spilling any beans here, but we <laughs> uh, we were the production company on uh, Harley Quinn and the Joker podcast. Oh, cool! Um, so stay tuned for news about that, that project. Yeah, uh, and yeah, and there's some other exciting things that really can't be talked about yet but uh you know follow the realm experience and there's already a lot like we have uh i mean dozens of our own feeds but then also mm-hmm. a huge network of other independent creators uh many of whom i followed for years already were friends or have become friends since they joined realm so if you sort of like are just interested in like what is this whole other dimension of podcasting like there's a huge you know deep pool of this stuff on the realm network so yeah i'm i'm on a day-to-day basis, uh, yeah, I get to make my own stuff. I get to make you know, sort of help work with our team members as as other projects are into various stages of development, and then also you know work on some of these other uh, bigger things coming down the line. That's cool. I'm glad you called it the realm experience because <laughs> that's what it is. At least, at least in my eyes, I mean, it's not just sitting there listening to a podcast. It's it really is an experience and. I think it's something that everyone who has the ability to should go listen to at least once. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, many people, people, there's a lot of different types of podcasts out there. That's what I still find is fun. Like I go back to when you still XML coded RSS feeds <laughs> and like, it was such a like, isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. It's like, so, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Like podcasting has always been a space of like, come as you are, make something, the by and large people are making things because they're passionate about it even if there's mm-hmm. a business element mm-hmm. involved there the passion has to be there or it's not very good and very <laughs> doesn't attract the audience <laughs> to make business work um and yeah and and in fiction it's sort of uh in the constellation of what podcasting has to offer it, it is something it is something different it's not news it's not uh learning about a topic mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. taking you on a, on a story journey and yeah uh yeah. it's yeah it's it's a lot of like it would be very hard to sort of like try to pin down exactly what a, a realm listener is like some people have jobs where <laughs> you know they kind of like the podcasts allow them to do something in their mind while their body is doing something kind of menial other mm-hmm. people are, you know you just like you hear in every podcast some people are taking it while they're traveling and or whatever but, you know, but our, our basic general thing is like you know we're we're a portal to another world so that's we offer i love that (laughs) so i love that portal uh, to another world love it yeah yeah. right on um speaking of other worlds and if you have any free time what what are you currently like listening to reading watching is there anything that's in your purview there yeah well i uh maybe we'll get in trouble for being this long to actually finish it but i literally just finished quiet part loud before we came on um which is absolutely terrifying. That's the <laughs> uh, the Monkey Paw horror production that came out on Spotify this year. Um, yeah, because of the spooky stuff, that tends to be my kind of go to. Though, right on. Uh, uh, in like the podcast world, uh, in film and TV. Well, I just 
I just finished Station Eleven, which is also not a new thing because there's a lot. I, I'm like probably a year or two behind where other people are with <laughs> pop culture. But what I it's okay. Really, it's what I really enjoyed. So I had done a post apocalyptic show, The Cleansed, and so often when I hear about something in a post apocalyptic genre, I'm like. Eh, I don't know. I watched so much media when I made that series. Like, what could possibly be new there? Right. And that was a, a series I generally found new and original. And also, I enjoyed the sort of nonlinear nature of the storytelling, um, which I also think is very interesting as an audio guy because I've what we've learned in the in Realmland is that that's it's very hard to pull that off. Like, it's debatable whether it's always works in in visual formats, like doing like yeah. time jumps or having yeah. multiple concurrent storylines, but mm-hmm. an audio that because <laughs> like, like I sometimes write scripts like that where I'm like, okay, and then you're with this group of characters, you go to that group of characters, but now we're going to chime. Now we're going to be in the past. And like, it's totally confusing. So for me, I kind of like a story that makes me work a little bit. That's like, you know, has a bunch of pieces that, you know, the puzzle kind of reveals itself later. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, those are, those are more recent examples. Now I'm and now I'm sort of going into underwater. So I'll let you know what we find. <laughs> <down there. laughs> so you're going like uh, what's it? Uh, the abyss in Leviathan. Yeah, yeah, which like is that. fascinating because like you know, of course, Avatar just came out, and we're like, this James Cameron <laughs> sure likes water. Um, yeah, it's and that's uh, I don't know how how much to go there. I mean that like I hadn't seen that movie in many many years and it really is interesting how it like becomes a different movie in the final act. Mm-hmm. And you're like, mm-hmm. it was so, <laughs> so like tightly controlled and then just like all control. <laughs> goes away. Um, so true. <laughs> it's funny you talk about underwater and I only bring that up because I was speaking with a mystery writer a mm-hmm. um, couple months ago and I asked her, if you weren't writing mysteries, what would you want to create? And she said, I want to create a world where people live underwater. Fascinating. <laughs> so I was like, well, and then you mentioned it, I was like, huh, maybe this yeah, is the whole well, thing. <laughs> I, I will say, I mean, apart from like, I had not known like on the set of the abyss, how like borderline da- you know, how how literally dangerous the working on the set was. <laughs> and also just like how insane to like have accomplished all this stuff literally underwater, which is like I, it's very hard to imagine anyone mm-hmm. actually doing it today. Um, and there are still are scenes in that where you're like, really captures the imagination of how un- unexplored the right. under the sea is mm-hmm. and how, what creatures may live down there. So uh, yeah. And until we somehow find our way to the bottom of the sea and uncover all its mysteries, I think it's going to remain a place that's fascinating and has this, you know, obviously you know space is endless so there's like <laughs> like that's True. always going to be part of the imagination but it's like also feels inaccessible in a way that like but it's right there if i just go down <laughs> i'll i'll be there <laughs> in a way that space you just know like you just do the math and you're like well i won't get anywhere cool until we invent cryo freeze or whatever so i just <laughs> you know we're gonna if we get to mars that'll be cool but in, in my lifetime will we will we be able to like go to mariana's trench i don't know probably not but it's still yeah and it's yeah it's it's i can see why you know there's there's a fast yeah there's a fascination with Mm -hmm. i think yeah i think as a species we're just sort of wired to go look behind things even (laughs) even when it is to our peril physically we just want to know what's over that hill Um, very true very true um now with um film and audio is there been um what's the major overlap there for you that you like you said okay i did film and then audio but this is like the intersection where i thrive Mm -hmm. is there a place there that you could see in your life or career that that's where i want to stay in that area more often yeah well i think what's interesting uh so i also follow like a lot of sound designers for film uh like i uh, mark mangini who worked on uh dune like had a thing like a popular blog post on prosoundeffects.com that I was looking into his remarks and I follow like what Randy Tom at Skywalker Sound has to say. And th- and there's so much, you know, sound people are so creative because it's, to mm-hmm. me, it's a, it is a little bit like some sort of magical black art because like 
<laughs> what you're doing uh, is very rarely literally what the person is experiencing. And so there's this, all this craft around how do you uh, create what someone thinks a dinosaur or a gun sounds like, but is ne- not literally what any of those things are. Um, mm-hmm. But what is true in a lot of filmmaking is that sound is is often brought too late into the in the process. So it's sort of oh, like, yeah. okay, we shot the movie, add sound to it, as opposed to saying... Uh, how do you use sound to tell a story or, or, or you, what are the uh, narrative possibilities of sound and how do we work that right, into our so true. storytelling experience earlier uh, in the process? So that sort of, you know, limitation of imagination is because it's definitely not a technological limitation. It's more of a uh, director is not realizing what they don't know about how great sound is. Uh, <laughs> like that goes away in podcasts because like that's all you have to do. And so- yeah. Uh, you, for me, there's, it's just always, it, it remains always challenging, but also really invigorating. Cause you say, uh, yeah, how do we, you know, we want the, the performance has to be there. The words have to be there. Uh, that has to be there to convey meaning, but how do we, you know, what, how, what kinds of sounds do you add and how do you add, add them in such a way that it, Build, builds and doesn't distract or take away or muddy that experience. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I think the, the tools look a lot like a, like an, a film or TV post-production house. Like, you know, literally like what we do if we just were doing it to a tape, it would be the same sort of thing, except instead of literal pictures, we have to think of those pictures. So, <laughs> and I find that a really fun challenge because it's, it's interesting because I think sometimes it seems counterintuitive, like, oh, okay, well, it's just like you're know, doing sound design for a film, but there's no film, so it must be easier. And on some level, that's true. But on the other hand, uh, how are you going to convey subtle things like someone moving right. from one side of the room right. to another or, or uh, you know, if there's a fight scene and two, two people draw their guns that are staring each other down, how do you convey that without being like, ah, I'm aiming my gun at you and you're aiming your gun at me. Ah. Uh, so it's, yeah, so there's a lot of just that sort of stagecraft. So I think I'm getting a point in my career where it's like you sort of know, I mean, it's like the chess thing. Like it's, you you know the rules, you can get good, but being a master is very, very difficult. And mm-hmm. there's, I just don't think there's any sort of like limit or end to what the medium can do. I think we're just starting to break through where, uh, you know, there are a number of a number of shows that can be attributed to raising awareness about the art form. Uh, you know, there was a, there was a point uh, where like the message Limetown black tapes podcast all sort of came out around the same time around a certain zeitgeist around, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, podcasts that felt like serial, but were fictional. And, you know, those reached wide audiences and, and then uh, you know, whatever, just to, to some, you know, the, the, medium continued through intervening years but especially in the pandemic a lot of like hollywood houses started to really realize how cool podcasting could be and how podcasting was something that could happen even when yeah. um you know sets as <laughs> as they were operating <laughs> uh, pre-pandemic couldn't couldn't be done and so now that there is all this heightened interest and the audiences are growing and and it's possible to run a professional operation you're just getting much more sophisticated projects, which just means there's like, there's so much more to explore. Like, yeah, uh, very true. there's a lot of, we know a lot of sci-fi horror fantasy all does really well. People crave that, but there's also way more. We have some funny shows with realm, uh, offbeat shows, contemporary drama. And I think there's just, a, there's just so much more. So I think kind of anything that could be done in any medium in terms of like genre or approach can be done in audio, but mm-hmm. not all of it has been done yet because it's still, yeah, in the grand scheme of media, uh, newish, at least the podcast incarnation, obviously, uh, you know, we, the ver- some version of it as a broadcast medium has existed since like the 1940s, but you know, what we're doing today is different. Yeah. Completely agree. And I, myself included, I really, when my co-host approached me and said, hey, you want to start a podcast with me? Mm. I was like, I, I kind of, you know, I knew what a podcast <laughs> was, but I, I never really listened to it. And even to today, I don't really, haven't really fully explored the wide breadth of types of genres that are out there, like you said. And 
it is a medium that is has been around, but I think it's still in its infancy with what can be done, especially with the growing technology side of, like you said, with Dolby Atmos. And I think for me, that that makes so much more possible because like you said, you can get the fine details. You can get the little nuanced sounds in there to help elevate the story. So I'm excited for where it's going. I really am. Yeah, and I think we'll see. We'll see you know more classic characters, and and I think it's just going to be seen like right now. So much is like the first of this or the first of that, and it's just sort of going to be more like this is just media, and it's sort of part of like I, I would uh, you know kind of my vision of how we see things evolve is that when shows come out, more shows than not will have some sort of audio companion piece um as a podcast and what what that, that might cool. be yeah. is, it, is it like a little mini story of some character or something you didn't quite see on screen or whatever like th- that part of it may evolve but uh i think i think that's kind of where we're going because it's sort of like in some ways it's a little bit like comics where it's uh, uh which which is funny because a lot of people think seem to think like comics and audio, like comics are very visual. How does it work in audio? But I've actually done quite a lot of work in comics in my career. Uh, Recent project, uh, very proud of that came out in September is ElfQuest, which is based on the, you know, 40 years of Elf Ears tradition. And we, (laughs) uh, yeah, we, you know, that project. So people think, you know, people look at that and it's like got this iconic artwork. It's just gorgeous and is like, right. uh, you know, held up for for decades and, and people are cosplaying as these characters and, uh, you know, doing fan art. And so you say, well, how is this going to work in audio? And it's like, well, but the sound design can sort of act aesthetically to what the art is doing. Obviously, it's not going to be the same, but it's going right. to sort of it, it, it conjure whatever that visual is doing. Um so at any rate, that uh, like with Lock, when we, we all back when we did Lock and Key, that was also based on a graphic novel. And again, mm-hmm. there was all this stuff in what the visuals were saying that uh, you know was not literally in the words the characters were saying during certain scenes, but sort of was all part of the the mood and feel. And so, right. at any rate, so you, you see a lot of like a lot of uh, popular shows and franchises have sort of comic book components that go and they you know, can build out the lore of it, or they sort of build little mini sods that are sort of outside of the, you know, the, the visual form of the franchise. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of think there'll be a lot of collaboration either, either if it's not directly from like the actual storylines in those comics, the kind of, the kind of uh, creators who gravitate to those medium, um, at least on the writer side, people who are like, can kind of say, okay, how do I take an existing franchise and build like a little, thing <laughs> that you know, sort of play with that play with that tool kit and, and make something and i yeah and i've and, and you're seeing it I get, i've also really enjoyed um what marvel has been doing in the space starting with wolverine and now um there's a bunch of them the wastelanders series um oh, nice. which i think is just they're just really cool they're fun they're very different than what's happening visually but they are really wonderful satisfying experiences and uh you'll get get more screen time with these characters yeah, I, I think you said companion pieces, and I think that's a great way to um, utilize the podcast or what do you call it, audio stories or or mm-hmm. not. And because maybe there is, for me, I'm a big fan of when watching a movie, I see a character, maybe a background person, like, what's that person doing? Mm-hmm. He's witnessing all these events going on. What what's his story? You know, what what how did he how was he affected or she affected by what he they saw? Like, so maybe they have to go to like counseling now for PTSD. <laughs> maybe they witnessed, you know, the invasion of New York and say like the Avengers or something like that. And now they're we get to learn more about them. So it's just a deeper dive into that world. And I and I think this technology and this type of storytelling, because it is storytelling, is perfect for that. Yeah, I think it'd be a, yeah, a great podcast. Someone who's traumatized by seeing a superhero battle who has to go to counseling. <laughs> and how they're like, <laughs> yeah, they're how their life has been changed. Right. And it's not, maybe not for the good, maybe for the bad. I don't know. It's just, it's, I find it interesting. So I look forward to seeing more studios utilize this to get more stories out of that. Totally. And I think there's been a little mini trend of, um, uh, you know, seeing podcasts as sort of a pipeline to Hollywood projects, which I, you know, hugely 
in favor of um, because it's a way of, uh, you know, a way for people to like get out, play in the space, creates opportunities for podcast uh, creators. And yeah, and and, and f- what you can do is you can make an entire podcast series of something for, you know, far less than whatever take to make a TV pilot. Um, but I also, for me, always am advocating for podcasting itself uh, for for, mm-hmm. these, for audio stories to be satisfying as their own experience. And in fact, True. that sort of has to be the case. Because like if, mm-hmm. you, if, if something was sort of made, but like it was really because they kind of wanted a TV pilot to be made. Like people just sort of be able to tell. <laughs> yeah, work. yeah. And so yeah. what you what you need to, you know, for me at least, is starting from a place of, you know, what makes this a compelling story to tell in this medium specifically? And, and how do you use what this medium offers as strengths that will differentiate it from like what you could do in another uh, environment? And like to go back to Blood and Gold, part of it was like, just the sheer amount of it um, is a big part of it, of like being able to tell the huge uh, part of this, you know, the, the duration of the story and mm-hmm. also just the way uh, you're able to just sort of sit in some of the moments and really feel them um, yeah. is just, you know, something that is is uniquely unique to the audio format. Right on. I mean, and yeah, it's just, it's only going to get better as more, hopefully get better hopefully it doesn't get diluted i guess i should say it's more um people embrace this and not only in the podcast space but also in the storytelling space and see that it is a a viable way to be a portal to another world like you said yeah. so so totally thank you so much for for coming on our show and and giving us some background into what it takes not only to build the worlds but just to um what what it encompasses and how it um can play out in your ears so if people wanted to find out more about you um or more about what you're doing where can they follow you on yeah so uh, me personally fred is at final rune f-i-n-a-l-r-u-n-e and that's pretty much on all the social things okay uh, twitter until it burns down <laughs> uh, and, and instagram i guess mainly um yeah and realm is realm media i believe is our handle and so that's sort of the kind of overall network brand but we're uh really fun there but yeah if you if you follow me you're gonna see me tweeting about projects probably pick put up a picture of a goat once in a while um <laughs> see me try and make some mastery uh that sort of thing um so it's a you know it's an interesting timeline um yeah and and there's the you know, depending on what your interests are there's a lot um and i'll say so i also have my personal website is, is final okay. and i put up during the pandemic at the very beginning of it a free online course so if you've heard any of this and you're like i want to go play in this pool uh i walk through it over the course of like five uh videos like kind of like this is how you make a thing um so that's just available it's there for free that's cool and uh that's i kind of always to me it's more fun when more people are participating and you know even if like you only are making it for yourself or for fun or with five for to share with five people i think it's just it's just really cool uh to go and to learn how do you just capture this magic trick of uh taking of okay so like the first moment I kind of really grasped the power of this medium. It's I had been living in New Orleans, I was, as I was talking about, and um, my return to Maine coincided with Hurricane Katrina. And so I'm back in okay. Maine, and my first show, I'm just trying to like help people like c- capture what New Orleans was like. And it was like uh, the sound of 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 horse hooves clopping on cobblestones mixed with like a trumpet and background burp, 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 <laughs> and like a beer bottle rolling across stone and okay. like, boom transport <laughs> i'm there and it was like wow like if i was making a movie i'd have to have like the set and the actors and like all the clothing and like it would be this whole uh-huh. thing and with like four sounds i totally brought my you know brought myself awesome. there and then it's like and then you can just do things yeah and then you be like and then i found a portal to another world <laughs> and like it's just so cool how 
deftly you can move from different places uh mm-hmm. and and if you know as someone who was like trying to figure out how to be an indie filmmaker and i'm like all my ideas were so gargantuan i'm like how am i ever gonna make this and it won't suck <laughs> and just be like oh i can make it an audio where it's not easy however uh you there's a lot of other way you could you, you don't have to feel like you're constrained by sets i can say you make something that yeah. sounds really yeah. professional um yeah. at, at a reasonable amount of effort and cost that is really cool thank you for sharing about your your tutorial website i guess you would call it your tutorial episodes that you put up or online class because i'm gonna go watch it i mean that's something that interests me i mean that's really cool so thank you for sharing that with me personally anyone else out there you guys can forget no go <laughs> <So> watch it <laughs> <laughs> um, i'll be selling them later on no. <laughs> um with that in mind though any parting words of advice you can give to someone who might be just starting out their journey into sound engineering and whatnot well, I'll I'll uh, paraphrase something that Randy Tom, who who I mentioned earlier, said, which was that like if you're wondering uh, how to get better sounds for your microphone, point your microphone at something that makes better sounds. Um, <laughs> and that's just a way of saying you see this so often with like people who are new to podcasting, where like they're in like these forums and they're like, yeah, they're sp- they're agonizing about like which microphone to buy, and like mm-hmm. it is far more important for you to like show up, record something on whatever way you can record it, cut it somehow together and put it on the internet than it is to like get the like fancy microphone. And and that's definitely been my um, path and my advice is like I recorded on like $50 of borrowed gear and it all kind of was crap. And then, but as I sort of learned it, got better tools to go along. And so it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, and also, and also, so it's like one is like, don't let your know, equipment anxiety stop you. And also exactly. don't stop because there's a lot of, I like a lot of people talk themselves out of doing something before they've even tried. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, well, mm-hmm. someone's already done it, but it's the only thing is that we're going to listen to it. Like, <laughs> you do that all day long, but just do it. Like, yeah, yeah. Just do it. <laughs> Make Perfect. something beautiful in this crazy world. Yep. Exactly. So with that being said, I thank you again, Fred. We can spend hours, I think, talking about sound here because it's so fascinating to me. I really enjoy it. But I know it's probably getting pretty late there in Maine um, as we're recording this in the evening. So we here at PopCultX appreciate your time and thank you for coming on and sharing some of your wisdom with us. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Real pleasure. Uh, Go out there. Do cool things, people. Thanks again, Fred, for taking some time out of your day or night <laughs> to chat with us here at Pop Cult X. We really do appreciate that. Make sure everyone you go follow Fred, follow Realm, um, go watch his tutorial courses. And uh, let's, like you said, go create something and just do it because that's what it really is. You just can't um, hold yourself back. So this is what we are going to be bringing you season three a lot of um creative people who might not be at the forefront or the visual front um of what you're seeing or reading but they are creating those worlds for you so fred thank you for creating these worlds and we look forward to hearing many more of them and for everyone out there thank you for all of your continued support here um this is just our little teaser trailer of what we have coming up for season three gabe and i will be back with you really soon to talk to really kick it off and get get in the ground running and and see where we're going with pop cult x as always if you have any feedback you have you have any suggestions for what you think um you want to hear about or you want to hear us talk about let us know drop it in the comment field send us an email um find us on twitter while it's still around find us on instagram facebook uh, maybe even a tiktok i don't know yet we'll see um but yeah thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you all next time <laughs>